community, everybody. Come on in, come on in. Good morning, good day to everybody. I'll give y'all a couple of uh, minutes to invite people. Y'all come on in. Y'all come on in. And if you see me looking down, I'm just sharing. So you guys can come on. Thank you for your patience, even though I'm five minutes behind. But I promise you, I will not hold you too long. Y'all come on in. Good morning to everybody. Good afternoon for some of you. Y'all share, share, share. Y'all go ahead and share, share, share. to everybody if you if you're tuning in please come on in and share 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 i'll give y'all about two more minutes and i'm gonna go ahead and start Use my finger in the way. I'm gonna add some stuff here. Come on, come on, come on. Let's push these last minutes. To get people in, need y'all to share everywhere you can. Come on, y'all come in, come in, come in. Y'all come in, come in. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in on today. Today is Saturday, August 1st, and I'm so elated, humbled, and excited that you have decided to join me whether on the live or on the replay. Um, my name is Melani Walker. I'm the visionary of Duchess Ministries, where we are uniquely royal. And we are re- uniquely royal because we are all different um, in the flesh, but in God's eyes, we are royal. And so I'm glad that you decided to join me today for this uh, first Say Life Saturday. Um, it's been a while since I've done it, but I haven't really been... Um, consistent with it to, to just be honest with you but um a lot of things have happened since the last time uh, I've done a say last Saturday but nevertheless um I'm not looking back and we're pushing forward moving ahead with the things that God has uh required of us to do and so I'm elated and excited to join you on this Saturday morning and I pray that um 
first of all, that he would give me the discipline uh, to uh, be consistent on Saturdays with you all. Um, I may come in during the week uh, if God leads me to share some things with you all. But nevertheless, I want to thank you for joining me on uh, this Saturday. Okay, and what a perfect day to kick things off to be to start afresh, start anew. Um, this is the month of new beginnings um, with the number eight being in being a symbolic of that um the first of the month you know give the top of the month to god and i believe the rest of the month he will handle and so uh i'm again i'm excited to join you all on today if you don't mind sharing inviting somebody to listen to uh this encouraging word that god has given me to share with you all on today um again i just want to encourage you all to um Take to take hold of this day to take uh do not take this for granted. This is the day that none of us was promised, but God has allowed us to be here. And so by his grace and mercy that um we are here today and I'm thankful for it. Um again, I won't prolong the time. Um, I know many of you probably have plans for your Saturday as well as I. So we want to go ahead and dive into what God has led me to share with you on today. And so um if you guys don't mind turning with me to Mark six. Mark 6, verses 1 through 6. Mark 6, verses 1 through 6. Okay? And I'll be reading from the good old King James Version. And I might pull from the uh, message version, too. I'll give you guys a second while I get the message version also. But I need you guys to uh, give your attention to Mark to Mark 6, verses 1 through 6, okay? All right, so Mark 6, verses 1 through 6, and it says, And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were, were astonished, saying, From whence has the, this man, which, from whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him that is that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended of him at him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work and save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them and he marveled because of their unbelief and he went round about the villages teaching um to give this uh video a topic i uh god has led me to share with you this particular topic y'all bear with me um well i didn't make a banner for it but in the caption of the video um, the topic is, I'm not there anymore. Somebody type that on the screen. I'm not there anymore. I'm not there anymore. Um, and a lot of times when we read this particular passage of scripture, um, we always think about how people um, are lacking belief in terms of their faith in God and in terms of what he can do in their lives. And of course, in this particular passage, it does demonstrate that. But I want to take it just a little bit further and say that um, a little bit further than the familiar spirit part of it, because when Jesus was in, in Nazareth, people were familiar with who he was when he was a child. OK, and as we know, in uh, the New Testament, Paul said that um, when I was a child, I thought I was a child. But when I grew up, uh, I put away childish things. And so, um, but even though he put away childish things, there were some people that still had him in a childish mindset, some people that had him in a child state of mind. Um, even their own minds were probably in a childish state, childish state. And so they all they could do was think about who uh, Jesus was or who he or who even Paul was back in the day. Um, they probably had, for, you know, grew up with Paul and be like, is that the one that um, was ready to to kill the church or to kill the people in the church and want to cut people's ears off and, you know, the one with the cussing spirit or whatever, you know. And a lot of times people get familiar with us like that. Um, 
is that the one that um, always would beg people for money or always would find some kind of way to get, you know, to get this and that done, um, but didn't have the backing that they need or didn't have the support that they need. And God wants, God really wants me to encourage somebody that wants to get away from those people with a familiar spirit to be like, look, you need to take a stance and say that I'm not in that place anymore. I'm not about to sit and settle for people with, first of all, a crab mentality. And second of all, with people that just want to keep me in that uh, particular position because I'm not in that place anymore. It's in the spirit. I'm not there anymore. I'm not there in the natural. I'm not there in any shape, form, or fashion. Why? Because God is taking me somewhere. God is showing me things and God is bringing me into a new place in him. And so when we approach Mark 6 verse 1, it says, and he went out from thence and came into his own country and his disciples followed him. Now I have a detailed Bible here. And so it, of course, in, in the description, it kind of tells you uh, what some some verses mean. And so for verse one, my Bible says that here begins Jesus' final extended ministry to his native area. His rejection there sets the stage for the mission beginning in verse seven. OK, and so verse seven, it talks about where Jesus sends the 12 to preach and heal. OK, so before he is even sent to do a work among the disciples and among those who follow him is before he even commissioned the disciples to do what it is that they're called to do, called to do. He had to go through an experience of rejection. OK, and for years, for years, for years, for years, can I just put a little bit of me in here um, for years, for years, for years. I have been diagnosed with depression. Um, I have been di diagnosed with no low self-esteem. And to some extent, to some extent, that part, you know, some of those things were true. OK. Um, and I did know, even though I didn't know some things, I didn't know some things. And one of the things that um, I'm glad for a, a husband, a, a, a help me, uh, that helps me see me for who I really am and helps me pull out some things from the root and find the real meaning behind why certain behaviors are what they are. And so um, the real, the real meaning why the real reason why some of us, most of us are depressed is because we've been rejected most of our lives. And so if, if you're in a state of rejection, you probably at one, one place or another, or probably even in the early stages of your life dealt with some form of uh, rejection. You dealt with some form of rejection, whether it was being last to be picked for a game uh, in childhood, whether it was your own parents uh, leaving you and forsaking you, whether it was your friends leaving you or forsaking you, whether it was just, you know, you being a, um, maybe you was in an orphan, you know, in an orphan phase, whether in the natural or spiritually to where you didn't have no physical or earthly influence um, to push you to where you needed to be, um, you know, in the natural as well as spiritually. Um, so there was some form of rejection that has occurred uh, in your life to where now you're depressed. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to go anywhere. You don't want to move on to bigger and better things because you've been rejected so much that you don't want to deal with the hurt. You don't want to deal with the negativity. But let me admonish you, even Jesus went through it. Even Jesus went through it. And it's right here in our text in Mark 6, verses 1 through 6. Okay. He had to go through a, a brief period of rejection. And that's, thank you, Jesus. There's a brief time for this period of rejection to occur in your life. There is a brief time for this period of reject, rejection to occur in your life. This space does not have to last all your life. It does not have to last all your life. Take it from me. It took me a long, long, I mean, a real, real, real long time to me, for me to stand up and say, um, you know, this is not going to have a hold of me. This is not going to be a part of my life anymore. Why? Because in the words of Jacqueline God, God is changing my story. 
God is changing my story. And it may not be the way that you want it to turn out, or it may not play out in the way that you want it to occur. But because God is the author and the finisher, he ultimately has to say so over my life and he has it over your life as well. And so moving on um, into verse two, um, it says, and when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished. Okay, let me pull that out in the message version really, really quick. It says in verse two, Mark six, verse two, on the Sabbath, he gave a lecture in the meeting place. He made a real hit impression, impressing everyone. He made a real hit impressing everyone. We had no idea he was this good, they said. How did he get so wise all of a sudden, get such ability? They were in amazement. They were in astonish astonishment of what he could do. Well, the whole time he was like, I've been, I've been created, you know, in the image of my heavenly father. Y'all excuse me. My, excuse my little finger, but I've been created in the image of my heavenly father. So I already knew what I possessed. Even though you rejected me, even though that you put me to the side and you thought that I was limited to do just to do this because of who you thought I was back then. You know, you limited me, you put me in a box that I was never meant to fit in. And so with that, God is saying that you need to step out the box. You need to step out your own comfort zone. You need to launch out into the deep. You need to get out of those things that are familiar to you. Get away from those people. Get away from those mindsets that are familiar to you because all they wanted to do was see you stay in the same predicament that you were before. Um, and more recently in my life, me and my husband, as I mentioned this before, we're in Houston. And um, people were like, you know, every time we talk to people, even though we don't really talk to it, you know, as often to people, um, because we really feel like that God is saying, you know, I need y'all to be on the low for a little while. Uh, <laughs> I need y'all to be on the low for a little while. But the way we're doing things now is different. We used to be like, you know, push our stuff out there. We used to, um, you know, push push hard and, and get people to notice what we're doing. Because they know that we support them and we encourage them in everything and anything that they put their hands to. We wanted the same. We know we, we've been trying to pull, you know, it's like pulling teeth, trying to get support from everybody. And God is saying, you're not in that place anymore. You're not in that place to where you have to scramble and, and get attention from here, there, and everywhere. Why? Because now I'm about to elevate you because of your faithfulness, because of your diligence, because of you persevering and disciplining yourself to be in a place to where you can say, I trust God completely with everything concerning my life, whether it be my finances, whether it be my ministry, anything concerning my life. I fully trust God with everything that I am. I fully trust God with everything that I do. And I fully trust God with everything that concerns my life. Okay. So we have to remember that even though we're rejected, even though, and y'all know this is a ministry for the underdogs. This is for those who feel like they were last. God is reminding you that you're first here at DM. Um, so remember that even even though people put you in a box, God wants you to come out of it. God wants you to come out of that place of familiarity, that spirit of familiarity, that unbelief that people try to put on you. Even you know, even to where you you're feeling like that you need to, even even where you're feeling like that you believe it yourself, even where you feel like that you believe the lies that were said about you. Everything that people say about you doesn't have, you know, isn't true unless you want it to be true or unless it really is true. OK, but God is pulling you out of your comfort zone. And so and it's, they were so astonished. The people around him were so astonished. So they were like, we didn't know all of this was in this person. Can I be one of the first to tell you that even though they knew what I could do, what certain people knew I could do, they still would let me be me. Can you type in the comments? Um, I was in there. I was there before. I was there before. I was there in the place to where even though people knew what I could do, and even and even though people saw a lot of potential in me to do so to accomplish certain things, that they still didn't want me 
to be who I'm really supposed to be because they were afraid of what could happen. Even I was afraid myself of what could happen. You know, if I really tapped into the full potential of who God has called me to be, I've been afraid for a long time. But this is a brand new month. This is a brand new brand new season in my life. And I pray in your life that before January 1st, 2021 hits, that you take time now to realize your full potential and realize um, what God has what God has made you to be and where God is taking you, where he's pulling you out of and where he's taking you. You have to un you have to fully trust God and fully rely on the gift of the Holy Spirit to take you to a place to where you've never been, but trust God that he's there with you. And so we're continuing on. And I want to read verses three through uh, six in the message version. It says, but in the next breath, because they were cutting him down, he's just a carpenter, Mary's boy. Here go that familiar spirit. He's just a carpenter, Mary's boy. We've known him since he was a kid. We know his brothers, James, Justice, Jude, Simon, and his sisters. Who does he think he is? They tripped over what little they knew about him and fell sprawling, and they never got any further. Here's a say lie for you. Here's a say lie for me. Verse 3, the last part of verse 3. They tripped over what little they knew about him and fell, sprawling, and they never got any further. People that get familiar with you, with you and people who think they got you locked down and know about who you are are going to fall in this season. They're going to be shocked and all in amazement about what God is doing in your life, but they're going to fall short of where they're supposed to be because they're so stuck and focused on what, you, what you've what been and where they're trying to keep you instead of praying for you and to push your potential out so where you can get to where you're going. They're going to fall short. They are going to fall. They are, let me read that part again because that just blessed me and they never got any further. There's no progress with familiarity. There's no progress when you become familiar, even with yourself. I've become familiar with myself for far too long. And that's why I feel like some days I never got any further than where I needed to be because I was familiar with what I did. I was familiar with, um, you know, my, what my habits were and what my creativity was that I did not open it up enough to where I could say, okay, God, you take this over. You step in and be the God that you are in my life because, you know, it's not my own anyway. Everything that I do doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. And so when people get familiar with you, when you get familiar with yourself, you will not make progress. You will not make progress. And this message version, this blessed me. This is like my favorite version outside King James. Um, so they did not get any further. So y'all remember that. Y'all remember that. Type, I'm not in that place anymore. I have to go further. You can type, I'm not in that place anymore. You can type, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm ready to go further. I want to go further. God is taking me further. God is pushing me beyond my limits. And I trust them with the process. One thing, one of the things that we say in our beloved organization, who has rush starting today, shout out to my sisters. Um, one of the things that we learn in this organization is that you have to trust the process. And when you trust the process, that means you trust the God of the process. You trust the God of the process. And so he's going to take you further than you've ever been. If you really fully truly depend on God for his guidance, his leading, his leading, his teaching, his wisdom, his understanding. You have to go further than where you are. Why? Because it's not about you. It's not about you, even though you're the vessel he's using, even though you're the vessel he's using, it's not about you. And so I want to, I pray that that's a say right there for you, 
And so let me finish verses 4 through 6. Jesus told them a prophet has little honor in his hometown. He has very little honor. It's very slim. The King James says, but Jesus said unto him, a prophet is not, is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. Now, listen to listen again to the message version. The message version says, um, Jesus told them a prophet has a little honor in his hometown. But the King James says a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country. You see, there's honor. There's reverence for you. There's respect for you. But it's not going to be in the place where you think it should be. You think because you're at where you're at that you're going to get the most props and you're going to get the most respect. And God is saying, no, that's not where you're going to find it. And a lot of people say, I don't care what they say about me. Well, what do you call when Jesus asked one of his disciples, who do men say that I am? I'll let that say lie right there. What do you call that moment where God asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And we say, Oh, I don't care what people think about me. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. Because not only you want to, you know, find out what people are saying just in general, but you want to find out their mindset because God is exposing people for who they really are. Man, it's a simple yet profound reminder that God is trying to take you further than where you are. You are not in that place anymore. I dare y'all to type it until your fingers hurt. You are not in that place anymore. You're not. You're not. One of the reasons why, and the testimonial part is going to come later on, but my husband and I had to relocate is because people were getting too familiar. People were getting too familiar with me and my, my husband. In everything that we did, in everything that we push to support people in every in every endeavor that they put their hands to. They know the walkers was going to be supporting front and center. And it wasn't about our name. It was, it was about God and it's about sharing the love of God with those who needed to be pushed, with those who needed to be encouraged, even though we wasn't getting the props that we needed to get. Okay? So if you're, if you're in that place in your life, let this be a sailor for you to say, look, I'm going to go for it no matter how it looks to me because this is not mine. This is not about me. This is about what God is saying about my life. And I have to do what he tells me to do. I have to do what he tells me to do. Okay, so let me finish this off in the message version. Uh, Mark 6, and I'm at verse... Uh, Oh, that blessed me. I got off track a little bit. But verse 4. Okay, Mark 6, verse 4 in the message version. Mark 6, verse 4 in the message version. It says, Jesus told them a, a prophet has lived on his own town among his relatives on the streets. He played at, in as a child. Okay, that they're bringing back his history. Jesus wasn't able to do much of anything there. He laid hands on a few sick people and healed them. That's all. Now, what people may think is minute in their eyes, God is saying, well, this is part of who he is. This is part of what I call him to be. So what you think is little in your eyes is big in mine because the obedience, the Bible says, is better than sacrifice. And so verse 6, it says he couldn't get over their stubbornness. Just hard-headed people. Just hard-headed people. He couldn't get over their stubbornness. He left and made a circuit of the other villages teaching. He said, if you don't want what I got, I'll go somewhere else. You don't want what I got, I'll go somewhere else. If you don't want where what I got, I'll go somewhere else. Again, part of the reason why me and my husband moved, because people were getting too familiar with who we were and 
for a for a certain amount of time, my husband and I were getting too familiar with who we were. Like, well, this is who we are. This is what we do. And let me tell y'all, just because we change as a people, just because that we decide to, you know, spread our wings and fly, you know, just in general, doesn't mean that we don't change who we are because we still love, we still support, okay? But now we um, use wisdom in our support, if that makes sense, okay? We, when you support people, make sure you use wisdom. Make sure you use wisdom. God is calling us to be wise. This pandemic we're in is causing us to use wisdom. And the Bible also says um, we do not cast our pearls before swine. We do not cast our pearls before swine. And so if they don't receive you, the Bible says shake the dust off your feet and keep it moving. You do not have to settle for a familiar spirit. You do not have to settle for people keeping you in a place to where God is pushing you out of. You got to tell yourself that I'm not happy here. That's one of the last things I said before we moved to Houston. I said, baby, I'm not happy here. I'm not happy here at all. I'm not happy here. Mm -mm. So if you're not happy, if you're not, if you do not possess the joy of the Lord in your life, then you got to make a decision. This is your time to make a decision. We are at the threshold of the second half of the year. For some, for some of us, it's the what? It's the third quarter. Toward it, really towards the end of the third quarter, if I'm not mistaken, right? Or the middle part of the third quarter. We have to make a decision, y'all. This pandemic has shut us all the way down, okay? It shut us all the way down and slowed us all the way down to look and evaluate and seek God for answers, for revelation, for wisdom, for understanding, for insights, for encouragement, for inspiration. Get in this book. Get in this book. I love technology and I love what it could do for us as far as convenience and everything that it entails. But this old school book <laughs> makes the words come alive. Makes the words come alive. Anytime I, I open this book, the words jump out and they speak to me. Like as if it was God, you know, right here in my face. So get in this book. Get in a place to where you're like, God, I need you to help me come out my comfort zone. I need you to help me uh, stretch myself. Uh, help me do the things that I'm not used to doing. Because uh, let me give y'all an insider. I'm about to be a, a customer with TLC. <laughs> I really am. Um, I'm not going to do the business part. I don't think with everything I got going on, uh, I ain't going to be able to sell anything like that um, outside of paparazzi, of course. But um, I'm about to, you know, change some things in my life. Why? Because first of all, I want to live a little longer. Okay. Uh, I want to be able to do more things. And I can't do it in the physical state I, I'm i in. I can't do it. I can't do it. Now, some people can. God bless them. But as far as me, myself, and I, and the God that's in me, I have to change some things in my life. And so I'm going to be doing some things different, um, pushing myself to do more things, pushing myself to uh, work harder, to push forward. And this time, when, when God puts me, when God tells me, okay, to go ahead and do certain things, it's going to be in a whole different manner. But it's going to be the way that God says to do it. And so I hope what I said has encouraged you, even in your own life, to look at some things to where... You need to do some things differently to where you uh, to where you look at yourself and say, I can't stay in this place anymore. I have to move past my fears. I have to move past my discouragements. I have to move past my disappointments. I have to move past um, 
everything that I'm not, everything that I'm not to get to where God needs me to be. Okay. So let this be a, a point in your life to where you say, I'm not there anymore. So tell, tell the negativity, tell the disappointment, tell all those people who underestimated you to kick rocks. Throw the deuce. You see this? Throw the deuce. Or even with the deuce, turn it into scissors, cut them off. Do whatever you got to do to move to the place where God needs you to be. Amen? So, again, I didn't want to hold you guys long. I pray that you enjoyed this St. Louis Saturday. Um, I'm, as as uh, God allows, I will be here every Saturday at 11 a.m. If the time changes or the day changes, I'll let you know. But say it Saturdays, meet me here at 11 a.m. Share somebody. Tell somebody. It doesn't take you but two seconds to share um, what God um, what, to share what God is doing here. Um, one of the best things, one of the best ways to get the gospel out is to press that share button. It's to invite somebody. It's to tag somebody. Let them know that, hey, look, there's an encouraging word for you to make it throughout even your weekend. Because we always need a word throughout the week, but it's something about the weekend that you need just a little bit more Jesus. Okay. And so with that being said, I want to encourage you all to stay connected with me here on Facebook, as well as on Instagram. I'm also on Instagram at Duchess Ministries. I need you to follow me on Instagram. Um, my website is listed b- below, duchessministries.tk. I'm also available to minister at your next event, whether virtually or in person. I definitely um, want to be a part of what God is doing for you in your ministry, in your events, anything like that. I'm accessible to you. You can always email me at duchessministries.tk. 83 at gmail.com and you can also if you feel led to i'd never um i never force anybody to give anything but if you feel led to sow a seed my cash app is duchess ministries as it is uh showing right there on the screen i dare you to sow into this word this good ground um duchess ministries is going somewhere and i pray that you will take the journey along with me um again share this word share 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 invite somebody to join you on saturdays again if god leads me to come on during the week i will do so it will be mainly on this page sometimes i'll go on my my personal page but i will be uh remotely here on this page uh for duchess ministries we are the advocates of the underdog god is reminding us that we are no longer last but we are first the first shall be last last shall be first and so we are here to let the enemy know that we are not going to be selling for last place any longer we are moving forward and we are coming up in the kingdom all right i pray you guys are blessed have an awesome and beautiful saturday even though it's raining where i am um be sure to be safe stay dry um put those masks on uh we need you to stick around um because god has purpose for you all right Love you guys with the love of the Lord. And remember that you are uniquely royal. God bless.